Dear friends, today we have a special episode of Super Tony's Adventures. We are happy to bring you a compilation of the best life hacks we've featured on our videos. Enjoy! Hello everyone! Today, Tony and I decided to go for a walk in the country and get a sunbath. But alas, the weather has other plans for us. Tony, we have to hide from the rain. I see a tree nearby. Let's go there. Oh, I'm sorry, I totally forgot about lightning and the fact that it always strikes the tallest object around. Let's run back to the open and hide under an umbrella. Oops, I did it again. For starters, we are now in the open and you are the tallest object around. Moreover, your umbrella is made from metal and it attracts electric charges. You better seek shelter in a ditch and make yourself small. Don't worry about the rain. It's better to get wet than to get hit by an electric charge of 10,000 volts or more. And try calling for help. <laughs> okay, this time I did it on purpose. I'm sorry, Tony. You should also know that it's not safe to use your phone during a lightning storm. The signals and waves of your phone can attract lightning. So, during a storm, you shouldn't use any electronic devices whatsoever or be around metal objects, bodies of water, or trees. We are back where we started, but there's a way out. The safest place during a storm is a house or a car. You just need to close all the windows and turn off everything that works with electricity. Even if a lightning hits your house or your car, the electrical charge will go straight to the ground without harming you. Where are we? Tony, what's happening? Stop! Are we inside your dreams? Yeah, seems like it. This surely isn't real life. And if this is a dream, then there's nothing to be afraid of. I'm glad to see you safe and sound and back in the real world. You know, Tony, I've been thinking. We don't want this happening again. So why don't we learn how to control our dreams? With this technique, you'll have unlimited powers in the world of dreams and you can do absolutely anything you want. So let's begin by placing a notebook next to your bed. Every day after waking up, you have to write your dreams for a couple of minutes. By doing this, your subconscious will learn to distinguish dreams from reality. The next step is to stop eating after 6 p.m. On top of that, you must not watch TV two hours before going to bed. If you have nothing to do, read a book. And finally, you're in bed. You should choose an unusual position. This will create new sensations while sleeping, and it will be easier for your brain to focus. Now, without any rush, think of everything that happened today backwards. And now, it's time to sleep. So, take a minute to relive everything that you did during the day, but backwards. In the end, put all your experiences from the day in an imaginary balloon and send it to the sky. And now, sleep. Welcome to the dream world, Tony. It's time to turn on your conscious. Look at your hands and your feet. It'll help you materialize your own self inside the dream, and you'll stop being a puppet inside your dreams. Now, you can decide where to go and what to do. For example, try to imagine a mountain of ice cream in front of you. Voila! Did you get it? You just have to imagine things and they will appear. Just like that. In the dream world, your actions are limited only by your imagination. Dear viewers, you should also try to have lucid dreams. You would be able to live different situations, prepare for future events, go back in the past, visit any place in the world, or be successful in all the things you can imagine. But don't forget that in the morning, once the dream is over, you will be back in your real life and nothing would have changed. So, if you want to be successful for real, you have to do some self-work. Not in your dreams, but in real life. I'm going to tell you how to behave on your first date, so you would definitely get a second one. First of all, you need to find a unique place to go. No, Tony, taking your date to the cinema is a bad idea. During a movie, you can't talk much and it's quite a cheesy idea for a first date. So, let's take a look at other options. A horse riding expedition, a visit to an amusement park, or karting are all great ideas. 
You see, on a first date you have to impress the girl. Picking an unusual place will help, but you'll also have to be interesting by yourself. You got it all planned? Then let's go! But wait, I almost forgot! There are three things that you should always take to a first date. So, in first place, the girl can get hungry, so take something to eat. But Tony, don't forget that people have different tastes, so don't bring anything too weird. Take a chocolate bar, which will help you fight hunger and will make your date sweeter. Moving on, you need an umbrella. Always, even if there aren't any black clouds, having an umbrella implies that you are serious about going out all night. It also shows that you are forethoughtful and you can be trusted. And now imagine if it rains. Tony, with your umbrella, you will save the day. What else? Oh, yeah, don't forget about money. Feminism is growing and spreading, but the golden rule is that men pay for everything on the first date. Well, you are now ready. Go on, win that woman's heart. Oh my, we weren't expecting that. In the future, Tony, be careful when meeting people on the internet, because they can be full of surprises. Dear viewers, you ought to be careful too when talking to people online, because at the other end of the screen can be a whole different person, and certainly not the one you thought. Tony, look! Looks like this dog is homeless! What kind of person could have kicked this cute doggo out? Oh, looks like he likes you! He certainly needs a friend and a place to live! Winter is coming! Let's take him home and I can tell you how to take care of a dog! So, the first thing you have to remember is that dogs are social animals, so in order to train them, you'll have to act like the alpha male of the pack. First of all, you mustn't hit your pet. Your puppy won't understand what's happening because animals in a pack don't hit each other. The alpha male can be mean, but in a different way. Usually, he bites his inferiors by the neck. So, if you need to teach your pet a lesson, use your hand like a dog's jaw and grab him by the scruff. But don't hurt him. If the dog is resisting, then, without letting him go, flip him on his back and wait for him to calm down. The next rule is, don't let your dog sleep in your bed. In a wild pack, the alpha male always sleeps on the higher ground. At home, your bed must be your sleeping place and your pet must sleep on the floor. Now let's talk food. Tony, you have to remember that you eat first and then your dog eats. Moreover, don't let him sit next to you and ask for food. And of course, don't give him anything from the table. The doggo must have his own balanced diet dictated by a professional veterinary. And now a little life hack. When your pet is eating, take some food from him and make him believe that you are eating it. Then you can give him the food back. It may sound weird, but this will help the dog understand who is the boss here, and he will learn to give away things easily without gnawing at you. And last but not least, Tony, in any situation, keep calm and act with confidence. Dogs can feel anything, and the alpha male shouldn't be fussy or scared. And that's it. If you follow these simple instructions, you will have an amazing dog that won't ever do anything bad to anyone. But but remember, Tony, for you, a dog is just a part of your life. But for the dog, you are the world and even more. They will love you from their childhood until their last day on Earth, no matter what. So try not to hurt the feelings of your new little friend. Hello, good boys and girls. Tony, how's your best friend feeling? Oh, I see you two are really happy. Nevertheless, I want to give you some advices on how to train your doggo. Let's go. Just so you know, Dog training is based on the idea that you become the alpha dog in relation to your pet. That way, he will trust you and obediently follow all your orders. Today, I'm gonna tell you how to walk your furry friend. Everything begins at home. If your dog starts to happily jump when he sees the leash, you'll have to wait for him to calm down. When your dog is too excited or way too happy, he won't listen to you or pay attention to your orders. If you have to wait an hour for him to calm down, then an hour it is. Your dog will soon understand that he won't go outside if he keeps jumping or whining. I think your dog calmed down. Tony, remember that you have to go out first and your dog should be behind you. 
If he tries to go first, that means he believes he's the alpha dog. We can't let that happen. You're the top dog in the house. The same works for the street, by the way. Your dog should go next to you and even a little behind. Hey, look, your pet smelt something out. Probably some old food. Tony, don't forget that food on the street can be spoiled or even poisoned. Pull the leash back and don't let your dog eat that. Repeat this movement several times and he'll understand that he can eat only things that you give to him. Oh, I think your friend saw a car for the first time and got scared. You shouldn't touch him, pet him, or calm him down. He can't understand what you are saying, but he'll feel your kindness and will think that his behavior is okay. It's like saying to your dog that being scared and having the jitters is fine. So, once your dog is calmed and forgot about the car, you can massage him. It's easy. Use your hands like a jaw and kind of bite the dog on the back. But there's a secret here. If you massage at shoulder height, he'll calm down, pet him near the tail, and he'll get excited. And last but not least, you should walk with your dog at least 40 minutes a day. Don't forget that your friend is young and very active, so he shouldn't be inside the house all the time. Hello, Tony. What's wrong? A headache, huh? Don't worry. I know a great way to get rid of your migraine. I also happen to know several life hacks for your health. Let's see if they work for you, Tony. If you have a headache, but you don't have any medicine around, you can use some ice and some hot water. Put your feet in a basin with hot water and apply the ice to your head. The difference in temperature will regulate your body pressure and your headache will go away. If you have a stuffy nose, press your tongue against your palate while applying pressure with your finger right between your eyebrows. Do this several times and you will feel that you can breathe better. If you have a sore throat, then eat a marshmallow or a gummy candy. The soreness will go away and it will be easier to swallow. And if you have a rasped throat, then massage your ears for a while. The nerve endings in your lobes will ease the feeling in your throat. So Tony, are you feeling tired after all these experiments? Don't worry. If you want to forget about tiredness and swelling in your feet, massage yourself with a bottle of icy water. Place it under your feet and roll it forwards and backwards. You will feel a lot better. But hey, maybe the problem is the footwear you are using. If your shoes are uncomfortable and causing blisters on your heels, here's a life hack to end the problem. Wrap a towel soaked in vinegar around the shoes and leave it for the night. You will notice the difference the next morning. Ouch, a splinter in your finger? I got a life hack for that too. Apply some water with soda to the place where the splinter is located. You can also glue some Band-Aid on top of it. After a while, it'll be a lot easier to remove the splinter. Tony, did you hear what I said? Tony? Oh, I see. Looks like our friend has forgotten about cleaning his ears. He has earwax blockage and can't listen properly. But this problem can be easily solved with the help of special ear candles. These are small candles that can be used to remove the wax from your ears. Hello, dear Tony. Are you going camping? For real? You are finally putting away that computer of yours and going out for some fresh air. Then I have some several interesting life hacks for you, which will make your trip much more comfortable. Allow me to share them with you. What do we have here? Oh, food and some water. That's good. But let's place a couple of small ice buckets here so it would be cold and the food would not spoil. And you know what? Let's make a portable stove to cook your food. So, we are gonna need a metal can, like a soda can, and we have to cut it in half. We are also gonna use some cardboard stripes, which we are gonna carefully place into one of the halves of the can. Excellent work, Tony. Now we just need to add some wax. The other half of the metal can will be our cooktop, so we need to make a hole for the flame. And don't forget to make a couple of holes on the side to let the air get through. Remember that you need oxygen to make fire, otherwise it won't work. For the next life hack, we need a small plastic container. Now make two holes in the lid and put a small tube in one of them and a fan in the other, facing the bottle, so the air will get inside. It would come in very handy later. Now take all these gadgets and let's go. It's time to go into the wild. Oh, I almost forgot. We are gonna need some sage. I'll explain later. 
Do you feel the fresh air in your lungs? Well, you go rest while I take a little nap. Oh, I see you're having a good time. Your tent is in place. Your dinner is almost ready and your campfire is keeping you warm. Perfection. What is it, Tony? Are mosquitoes bothering you? Well, it's time to use the sage. Simply throw it into the fire. The smoke from this burning herb will scare away these annoying insects. Wow, it got dark really quick. I think it's time for bed. So bring the container with the fan, the one we made at home. Add some cold water from the ice bucket. Now close the container and plug the fan to your portable battery. Now your homemade AC system is ready. It will keep the air cold and humid inside the tent, so you will sleep like an angel. Sweet dreams, Tony! Today we are going to check some interesting life hacks. We know that there are many similar videos online, but I'm going to show some hacks that not you nor our viewers have ever seen. Let's begin! So, Tony, you use your computer all day and are constantly putting files on your USB stick. But aren't you afraid of viruses? Luckily for you, there's an easy way to know if your USB flash drive has some kind of malware. Here's what you have to do. Open the USB's folder and create a new TXT file. Now we rename it like this. As you see, you also have to change the file extension. If you don't see one, then you have to open the View tab in Folder Options and disable the Hide Extensions for Known File Types checkbox. Moving on, now you have to find a nice icon and place it in your USB memory. It can be any image with a resolution of 64 by 64 pixels. Now we open our file and write the following text. And this line should be the name of our image. That's all. Now remove the USB stick and put it back in. Now, in the My Computer folder, instead of your usual icon, you'll see this image. But if the USB memory has a virus, then it will override our file and the icon will go missing. Now you know that you're infected. The next life hack is perfect for movie lovers like you, Tony. We are going to build our own movie theater. We need an old shoe box like this. In the back of the box, we cut out a circle and place a magnifying glass. On the inside, we make some cuts to place our smartphone. Voila! Now you can play a film, place your device in the right place, regulating the distance from the magnifier, so the image will be crystal clear and you can enjoy your film. So, Tony, I think it's time to rest. Let's take a nature trip without all these gadgets and devices. We are going to fish and enjoy the fresh air. Oh, I almost forgot. I know a great life hack for fishing. If you don't want to end up without a catch, we need some baiting. So, here's a secret. In the middle of the baiting, you have to place an effervescent tablet, like a vitamin or something. So, when the water gets to the effervescent tablet, it will start to react and the baiting will spread really quickly. On top of that, the water will be sweeter and some fish love that. I can assure you that it works, Tony. So, while our hero is cooking fish soup for dinner, tell us in the comments if you already knew these life hacks. The most interesting or funny comment will be featured in our next episode. So, subscribe and click the bell so you won't miss the new experiments of Super Tony. Bye-bye!